Hey everyone and welcome back. Today we're tackling a question that popped up a lot in the comments. Setting up Proxmox backup server on a mini PC. Yeah, specifically those with the new Intel N100 or N305 processors. They'll love the energy efficiency, right? But the big question is, can they actually handle the demands of a backup server? Well, we've got some great research lined up to help us figure that out. Yeah, before we dive into all the hardware specs, let's do a real quick Proxmox 101, just in case anyone's new to this whole thing. So Proxmox VE, that stands for Proxmox Virtual Environment, is a really powerful open source platform. It's used for running virtual machines and containers. And then there's Proxmox Backup Server, or PBS. It's specifically designed to back up those virtual environments, but you can also use it to back up physical machines and other data too. And the best part is it's free, it's secure, and it's super efficient. Exactly. That's a huge part of why it's become so popular, especially for home labs and small businesses. Now, our listener here is all about efficiency on both ends, right? Power right. consumption and backup performance. So can those N100 and N305 processors really deliver? That's the question, isn't it? Proxmox recommends using what they call modern CPUs for PBS, and that's where things get a bit interesting. When they say modern in this context, they mean processors that support hardware acceleration features. Things like AESNI for encryption, and ideally AVX2 for data processing. You can think of AESNI like a dedicated lane on the highway, but just for encrypting your backups. It makes the whole process way faster. Oh, okay, I see. And the good news is both the N100 and N305 actually do support AESNI, so they check that box at least. That's a good start. But it can't just be about having the features, right? It's got to also be about how well they can actually use them. You're absolutely right. It all comes down to processing power in the end. The N100 and N305 are quad core processors and their main focus is energy efficiency. They're not gonna be breaking any speed records, especially when you compare them to some of the beefier CPUs that people use for servers. But that doesn't mean they're automatically disqualified. It just means we need to really carefully think about your specific needs and what you're gonna be asking of this PBS. So let's talk about those hardware considerations then. Our research points to a few key areas we should be checking, like a checklist for building a solid PBS setup. Where should we start? Let's start with the CPU. Like we said, the N100 and N305 are great for power efficiency, but they might struggle with really large backups or tasks that demand a lot from the processor, like deduplication. That's where PBS analyzes your data and gets rid of any duplicate chunks to save space. Right, and I've heard that deduplication can be pretty intensive on the CPU. So how can we tell if these processors can handle it? This is where benchmark databases like Geekbench come in really handy. They give you a performance score that lets you compare different CPUs. So a multi-core performance score above 500 is pretty decent for lighter workloads. If you're dealing with a ton of data and you want smoother network throughput and faster backups, then you're going to want to aim for a score of 1000 or higher. You can easily look up the Geekbench scores for the N100 and N305 and then compare them to the scores of CPUs that are typically used in PBS setups. That'll give you a better idea of where they stand. Okay, so that gives us a way to measure the CPU's capabilities. Now, what about storage? I'm guessing that's crucial for a backup server, right? Absolutely. Fast storage is key for PBS, especially if you're planning on using features like deduplication and compression. Those can put a strain on even a powerful system. An SSD is definitely recommended. Ideally, an NVMe drive if your mini PC supports it. Think of it this way. If your CPU is the engine, then storage is like your fuel tank. You need a high flow fuel system to keep that engine running smoothly. Makes sense. And I remember reading something about ZFS being a good choice for PBS storage. What is that exactly and why is it important? ZFS is a really powerful file system known for its data integrity features and its ability to handle large storage pools. It works really well with PBS because it can create snapshots, basically point in time copies of your data. This makes restoring your data super easy. The only thing to keep in mind is that ZFS can be a bit more memory intensive, so having enough RAM is important. Got it. Okay, so we've covered CPU and storage. What about network speed? I imagine that plays a role in how quickly backups and restores happen. You're exactly right. Network speed is critical, especially if you're backing up multiple devices or dealing with large files. You can think of your network connection as the pipeline that's carrying your data to and from the PBS. A gigabit Ethernet connection, which is pretty standard these days, is usually sufficient for a lot of home lab setups. But if you're working with tons of data, or you need the fastest possible restores, then you might want to consider upgrading to 2.5 GBE or even 10 GBE. 
if your hardware supports it, of course. So it's about picking the right size pipe for the amount of data you need to move. If you've got a fire hose of data, you need a bigger pipe. Haha, <laughs> that's a great way to put it. A faster network definitely means faster backups and restores, which can save you a lot of time and frustration in the long run. Now, even with the best hardware, there are still certain tasks that can really bog down a system. Mm -hmm. Right. I'm thinking about things like garbage collection and verification. Oh, for sure. Those are super important processes that happen behind the scenes. Garbage collection, or GC, is like taking out the trash in your PBS system. It gets rid of any unused data to free up space and keep things running efficiently. And verification, as you might guess, checks the integrity of your backups to make sure they're not corrupted and that they can be restored properly. And those processes, while necessary, they can be pretty resource intensive especially on a CPU like the N100 or N305 that we're talking about. So is there anything we could do to make sure they don't impact performance too much? Definitely. One of the best things you can do is schedule those tasks, garbage collection and verification, to run during off-peak hours, like overnight or when you know you won't be actively backing up data. That way they won't slow down your system when you need it most. That's a smart move. It's like scheduling those heavy-duty tasks for when the office is empty. Anything else we should keep in mind when we're setting up PBS on a mini PC? Another thing to consider is whether you're going to run PBS on bare metal or in a virtual machine. Bare metal basically means you're installing PBS directly onto the mini PC's operating system. A virtual machine is like a computer within a computer. So I'm guessing there's a performance difference between those two approaches. Yeah, for sure. Running PBS on bare metal is usually going to give you better performance because it has direct access to all the hardware resources. It's like having a dedicated lane on the highway you can bypass all that virtual machine traffic. So bare metal is generally the way to go if you're looking for the best performance, especially with a CPU like the N100 or N305. Are there any other performance tips we should remember? Yeah, if you're using ZFS for storage, and I really do recommend it for its reliability, check if your mini PC supports direct disk access for PBS. This lets PBS talk directly to the storage drives, cutting out the middleman, so to speak. It can make a noticeable difference in backup and restore speeds. So we're streamlining the entire data pipeline for maximum efficiency. That's great. But even with all these optimizations, there are going to be limitations, right? Especially when we're using a mini PC. That's true. We got to be realistic about what these processors can handle. Hmm. If you're mostly backing up documents, photos, and smaller files, the N100 or N305 should be more than enough especially if you've got the right storage network set up. But if you're working with large video files, virtual machine images, or databases, that's when you might start hitting those performance bottlenecks. Exactly. And those CPU-intensive tasks, like the deduplication and verification we were talking about, they might take a lot longer compared to a more powerful system. You might end up waiting hours for backups and restores instead of minutes. So it really boils down to what kind of data you need to back up and how much of it you have. What if you're pushing the limits of what these processors can do? What are the alternatives? Well, there are a couple of options. You could consider a more powerful mini PC. There are some models out there with Intel i5 or even i7 processors. They'll give you a significant performance boost. But of course, they'll also consume more power, so it's a trade-off. Right. It's all about finding that sweet spot between performance and power consumption. What if a more powerful mini PC still isn't enough? Are there options beyond the mini PC world? Absolutely. If you're working with massive amounts of data or your backup needs are really demanding, you might want to think about enterprise-grade backup solutions. Those are usually rack-mounted servers that are designed to handle really heavy workloads. They come with features like redundant power supplies and advanced management capabilities. So we're talking about going pro, but I'm guessing that also means a bigger price tag. Oh, definitely. Enterprise-grade solutions can be a big investment but they offer a level of performance, reliability, and support that you won't find in a typical mini PC setup. It all comes down to your specific needs and budget. So there's a whole spectrum of backup solutions out there, from the budget-friendly mini PC to the high-performance enterprise server. It's about choosing the right tool for the job. But even if you're on a tight budget, using a mini PC with an N100 or N305 processor for PBS is a totally viable option. For sure. It's a great way to get started with a solid backup solution without spending a fortune. And if your needs grow later on, you can always look into more powerful options down the road. That's a really good point. You don't have to start with the most expensive solution. You can scale up as you go. 
We've talked a lot about processing power and storage. But what about the environmental impact of all this? Everyone's becoming more energy conscious. Oh, that's a great point. The N100 and N305 are known for being energy efficient, which means lower electricity bills and a smaller carbon footprint. But here's a thought-provoking question. Could a slightly more powerful CPU actually be more energy efficient in the long run? Now, that's interesting. How could that be? Wouldn't a more powerful processor use more energy by default? Yeah. It's it like, seems counterintuitive, but I'm curious. Well, think about it this way. A more powerful CPU can finish those tasks, like deduplication and verification that we talked about, much faster than a less powerful one, right? Even if it uses more power during those bursts of activity, it might actually spend less time overall working on them, which could lead to less energy consumption in the long run. It's kind of like comparing a sprinter to a marathon runner. The sprinter uses a ton of energy in short bursts, while the marathon runner paces themselves over a longer distance. That's a great analogy. So it's not just about how much power the CPU uses, but also how efficiently it uses that power. Exactly. It'd be really interesting to see some real-world comparisons of power consumption, you know, between different CPU models running PBS. Maybe a CPU that's a little more powerful, even if it has a higher TDP, could actually end up using less energy because it's faster. That's a great point. Something to keep in mind when you're choosing your hardware. It shows how important it is to look beyond the basic specs and think about those long-term implications. Absolutely. And it reminds us that there's always a balance to strike between performance, cost, and energy efficiency. There's no one-size-fits-all solution. The best thing to do is to really think about your needs, do your research, and then pick the setup that works best for you. Well said. This deep dive has definitely given us a lot to consider. For those of you who are ready to jump into setting up your Proxmox backup server with a mini PC, what are the key takeaways here? Choose your CPU carefully. Think about that balance of power and efficiency. Don't skimp on storage speed. An SSD is essential, and if your hardware allows it, look into direct disk access. Make sure you're optimizing those background tasks like garbage collection and verification. And remember, you can always scale up your setup as your needs change. Great advice. And as always, we want to hear from you. Share your experiences, your insights, your tips. Let us know what works, what challenges you run into. We're all learning together here. The more we share, the more we all benefit. So keep experimenting, keep learning, and most importantly, keep those backups running.